Hello everyone, thanks for coming along to Ready for Battle Painting. Today we'll be painting the Noctilith Crown. As you can see, I've got it all set up here, but it easily comes apart into its sub-assemblies and we're going to paint this with a limited amount of paint and get it ready onto the tabletop, nice and quick. So if you stick with us, we're going to get onto the painting guide. Just a quick one, if you like the channel, like this video, hit the subscribe button, give us a like or send us a comment at the bottom. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. So as you can see, we've got the Noxlift crown in all its sub assemblies. We've got the crown itself, the platforms and the chains. We're going to keep these all apart and paint them separately as we go through the video. So these are the paints that we used to achieve the end result. 12 paints in all. There'll be a list in the description of the video and for each part of the tutorial I'll explain how we use each paint. So the paint we're starting with here is Dark Reaper and what we're going to do, we're going to do a heavy dry brush on all the stone areas where the glyphs are uh, and we're going to build the colour up from Chaos Black. Like I said we're going to give it a heavy dry brush so what we're going to do we're going to go right in there and we're going to get a good base on there. Uh, all the spikes on top of the crown itself we're going to hit all these areas at the same time. We're just going to work that paint in, leaving some of the black in the recesses showing. But as we go along, we'll do each part in turn and get a good bit of colour on there. So obviously you want to do this part with a large dry brush or any dry brush you want to work with really. Medium to large size would do the best. So now we're on to the next paint and this paint is the Fang. What we're going to do, we're going to do just a, a dry brush of this paint, uh, not as heavy as the last one and we're going to go over all the raised areas, we're going to pick out that detail and just bring the colour up a bit more. Just using a normal dry brush again and we're just going to get in there and hit those edges and just go around the whole model front and back. Once this is done we'll be ready for the next paint. So what we're doing now, we're using the next paint which is Tyrant Skull and what we're going to do, we're going to give the stone detail that we've worked on a very, very light dry brush on the most raised edges and what this is going to do, it's going to pick out all that lovely detail, it's going to bridge the gap between those colours and it's just going to bring it all together nicely and it's going to be the last paint we use for the stonework. Now with that stonework all done, what we're going to do, we're going to pick our next colour which is going to be corn red and what we're going to do, we're going to use a normal paint brush, so I'm using a medium layer brush here. We're going to get some of that corn red on our palette and we're going to thin it down with a bit of water and what we're going to do, we're going to paint this on and, but we're going to do very fine, we're going to go into all these runes that you can see around the, the Noctilith crown. We're just going to get the paint in there so 
if it's nice and watered down it'll just flow nice and smooth into those cracks don't worry at this point about going over the lines you can always just use your thumb just to pick a little bit off if it if it goes out of them out of them lines onto the, the main bit itself but what we're doing we're just focusing on those recesses but also what we're going to do at the same time is around the crown where you can see the power cabling we're going to pick out them details as well we're going to be quite light and we're just going to we're just going to draw our brush across it so it catches the tops of those power cables and then that's going to be our base for our next paint once all these bits are done we'll move on to the next colour With all that corn red done on the sigils and the power cabling, what we're going to do now, we're going to put a highlight on these colours and we're going to use Troll Slayer Orange. Now what we're going to do, we're going to water this down a little bit and we're going to get a nice fine point on our brush because what we're going to need to do, we're just going to try and concentrate and get it on the very centre of these lines. Uh, you're going to need to take your time with this bit it doesn't matter if you make the lines too thick all we're looking for is a, a highlight a nice highlight on the inside of all these all these sigils also when you're doing this what you want to do you want to pick out the highlights on the the cabling that we've done the power cabling with troll slayer orange as well now what you can do you can do this either all across the whole of the power cabling or you can do it in staggered areas and just put gaps between it to make it look like the power's running round the cable in itself but once all these areas are done that'll be all the sigils and all the power cabling done and ready and we're on to the next step of the tutorial So with all the runes and the cabling done, the uh, the Noctilith crown is starting to take shape. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go and pick out these metallic details which are around the ones you can see with the skulls. And we're going to hit these with Balthazar gold. Now remember, thin your paint down a little bit to get it running nice and smooth. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to get it on all of these little areas that you can see the painting now. And we're going to hit these all with Balthazar Gold. This takes a bit of time, but just obviously take your time. There's only eight of them. And just work your way around them, getting each one front and back. And then once this is done, we'll move on to the next colour. So with the Balthazar gold finished, we're going to move on to our next paint, which is Lead Belcher. We're going to water it down a touch, and then what we're going to do, we're going to go around the whole of the outside of the model to do the uh, the power case, uh, sorry, the power cable casing all around the outside of the model. Water your paint down a little bit, like I said, and be careful when you're uh, you're going near the power cabling and the Balthazar gold areas that we've already done. Just take your time, go around each one, 
uh, you can get as close to the power cabling inside as you want but the closer you get the more risk you'll have of uh, touching that other colour so it doesn't really doesn't really matter if you go all the way up to it but it's up to you try and be as neat as possible and then just get all the silver on there if you require two thin coat if you require two thin coats just go over the detail again and then once this is done we're going to move on to the next colour Okay, so next what we're going to do, we're going to pick out all the skulls on the bottom parts of the platform. What we're going to do, we're going to hit these with some Rakar flesh, water it down a touch and then just go over all those little skulls that are hanging on the bottom. Altogether, there's only eight skulls to go, but make sure you do both platforms and just make sure you get a nice smooth finish. Okay, now that we've got the skulls done, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade to wash a lot of this model now. So what we're going to do, we're going to wash the platform areas, we're going to hit all the areas of Balthazar Gold with some wash, we're going to do the skulls on the platform, we're going to do the uh, all the areas we painted lead belcher on the outside of the power cabling. We're going to do all of these at the same time, and then what we're going to do after that Oh, sorry, excuse me, and we're going to do the chains as well that attach the platform to the Noxlift crown itself. And once all these areas are done, what we're going to do, we're going to let it dry, which should take roughly about 40 minutes to an hour. We're going to come back in and we're going to touch up some areas and make them a little bit extra grimy with another hit of uh, Agrax Earthshade.
Okay, like I said, what we're going to do now, now the areas are dried, we're coming back in and we're using a bit of a smaller brush this time. And we're going to touch up some areas with a bit more Agrex Earth Shade just to give them a bit bit more of a shade and make them a bit extra dirty and it'll once all this is dry it'll show up on the model and it'll look uh, it'll look nice and nice and grotty as it were so just take your time just pick out any areas you want doesn't matter where you put the brown uh, wash but just take your time and just pick out some areas that you want for yourself to look a bit more grimy So, like I said previously, what we're doing in this one, we're hitting all those Balthazar gold areas and the uh, lead belch areas that we painted with Agrax Earth Shade, giving them a nice little shade before we move on to the next colour. So next, just going back here with a bit more Rakar Flesh and what we're going to do, we're going to pick out a few of those prominent details on the skulls with Rakar Flesh. This is just to bring out those details a little bit more and just make the skulls look a little bit better with a bit of highlighting. Take your time, get a nice bit of thin paint on your brush and just go over them gently. Also what you could do here, rather than painting the details on like shown here, you could just dry brush, get a small dry brush and like before take as much of the paint off your brush as possible and just lightly dry brush it over the top of the skulls and it will give you the same effect. Now with the skulls finished, we're coming back in now and what we're going to do, we're going to do another lot of dry brushing and we're going to use Golden Griffin and we're going to dry brush all these uh, Balthazar gold details that we've done. So what you want to do is load up your brush, get as much of it off as you can and then start, dry, start brushing backwards and forwards until you catch all the edges of the Balthazar gold areas. I just go all the way around the model, front and back, on the Balthazar gold areas, just to bring out that detail. Okay, so next we're doing another dry brush and we're going to use Stormhost Silver. You could, if you've got the paint, you could use Necron Compound. Uh, what you want is a really light silver, 
and what we're going to do like before like we've done previously just get a good dry brush on there backwards and forwards and catch all those edges all the rivets and studs and spikes all the areas that are we've got clean edges just hit all these areas with a bit of a uh, storm hose silver and it'll really bring out that detail also you want to get any other metallic areas you've done like the outside of the Knoxlift crown the lead belts we painted on there make sure you hit these areas as well the chains that attach the uh, platform to the crown make sure you hit these at the same time okay so at this point what you can see I have put the Knoxlift crown back together because that's most of the paints done now but what we're going to do we've got two paints that we're going to go in with we've got some riser rust which will give us a rusty effect and then we've got nickel nickel oxide which is going to add a bit of verdigris to the model now you don't need to use these but I found that it just adds a little bit of extra weathering to the model with the riser rust all you need to do sorry with the Nikolai oxide all you need to do is get a little bit on your brush and you just paint it in little pitted areas little areas that might need a bit of oxidization just go around the model don't be too heavy handed with it just pick out some little areas and it'll just add a little bit of extra weathering you can just get it into little cracks and crevices like a shade but don't use too much of it just touch it in there and it'll be fine So what we're going to do next, the next thing we're going to choose is the riser rust. And with riser rust, what you want to do, you want to load your brush up, like a bit like a dry brush, but we're doing a stippling effect. And what you need to do with this is you're just dabbing it on. And you just keep going and going until you build the colour up. And it just adds a little bit of an orangey rust effect to the model. You know, you don't have to do this, like I said, but it just gives a little bit of extra texture to the model. So with those final steps completed and the model put back together, the Knoxlift crown is ready to go on the battlefield and using that limited number of paints, as you can see, it's turned out really well. So I hope you guys who have um, checked out this paint guide, if you're painting your own Knoxlift crown, I hope it turns out as well for you as it has done for me. And thanks for joining me. <clears throat> now I just want to say, uh, for all those who've joined me again for this video, I want to keep doing this so a subscription to the channel would be absolutely amazing and it'll keep you alerted for future videos that are coming out. I've got a few things in the work at the minute so uh, if you subscribe you'll be the first ones to know when a new video is being launched. You can follow me on uh, Instagram uh, for more updates about the show. It's at ready for battle painting. It's at ready the number four battle painting or one word or you can find me on twitter at ready the number four and then p and that'll let you know when new videos are coming out if i've got anything new any new ideas and stuff like that but once again thanks for uh, joining me and obviously hit that subscribe button if you like the video so i've got some ideas for future videos coming out uh, the more i do it obviously the better hopefully i'll get producing these videos as I've tried to do something new with this one if you were also the model that painted here the Knoxlift crown uh, I'm not keeping this for myself so it will be going on my eBay page so if you fancy your own model this model in particular then look for ready for battle painting on eBay as well and you'll be able to find some of the models that I've got on there subscribe to the channel if you could that'd be great leave us a like leave us a comment and I hope to see you in the next video uh, and we'll get another painting tutorial up and ready for you. So thanks a lot. It's Ready for Battle Painting signing off. Be lucky guys.